Ratatouille is my favorite Pixar movie. I know you clicked on a video about Tangled the series, just give me a minute. The concept itself is risky and inventive, and the amazing execution of the film delivers on every bit of potential it has. While the main message of the story is obviously about following your dreams and not judging people based on superficial qualities, I think the minor theme exploring the relationship between artists and critics is often underappreciated. Anton Ego, who, ironically, I've been compared to by my family ever since I started this channel, is the primary method in which the movie explores this theme. Despite being unabashedly harsh and pessimistic in his reviews, Ego is for once impressed when he eats Remy's ratatouille, only to be blown away once again when he discovers that the chef was a rat. We get to hear Ego's review of the meal, in which he discusses the nature of criticism and how while an artist risks everything when they share their work with the world, a critic risks nothing when they mock a failure. And because of this low risk, their criticism becomes less valuable than the trash they're talking about in a way. Ego's whole monologue highlights all of the unsavory parts of critiquing things that I don't always want to face. While I'm not a traditional critic and the videos I post are more like discussions I'd have with friends rather than professional reviews, the concept of hiding behind negative criticism instead of putting yourself out there is something that still hits home for me. Like Ego says, negative criticism is fun to write and, as I'm sure you'd all agree, fun to listen to. So when I talk about shows like Tangled the Series and make lengthy videos about how horribly the writers handled Cassandra's character arc, I can't help but feel a bit cruel watching my reviews. It's a lot easier for me to sit back and trash the show's writing from the comfort of my own home than to actually write for a million dollar Disney production. There is one important aspect of Ego's speech that I appreciate though. He never says that criticism itself is bad. I don't think we should ever get to a point where we aren't allowed to honestly critique things out of fear of hurting people's feelings. The key here is honesty. Being negative for the sake of being negative, or to get those sweet views, makes for hyperbolic criticism that doesn't help anyone. The point of critique is to figure out what went wrong so that it can be improved. So today, I'm going to put myself in a more vulnerable position and look at Cassandra's arc from a creator's side. Let's see if Cass's turn to villainy and stealing of the Moonstone is really unsalvageable, or if some fixes and tweaks could make it a more acceptable arc. First, let's make sure we have a clear understanding of the problems we need to fix. Obviously, I went more in depth on how these flaws hurt Cass's character arc in my last Tangled the Series video, but I'll give a brief overview here. The most glaring flaw, in my opinion, would be how irrationally Cass acted as a villain, and yet this was also one of my most contested arguments from the video. Almost all of the critics of my critique made the point that Cass had been traumatized after finding out that Gothel had abandoned her in order to live with Rapunzel, and that it's okay for a character to act irrationally in the sense that they can be driven by their emotions rather than logical reasoning. I agree that it's okay for characters to act irrationally or do things that frustrate the audience. For example, Zuko in Avatar The Last Airbender makes many illogical decisions throughout the first two seasons. I even remember really losing my patience with Zuko when he chose to return to the palace with Azula and abandoned Iroh to live in prison, even after Iroh had invested so much into breaking him free of the Fire Nation's influence. But while his actions frustrated me, I still love Zuko as a character because his actions were always consistent with who he was. It's clear to anyone watching from the outside that Zuko needs to get away from his wacko family as fast as possible, but we know that Zuko has a deep need to be honored by those around him, especially his father. So when Azula dangles the promise that Ozai will finally welcome him back into the royal family in front of him, Zuko jumps at the opportunity since it aligns with his core values and wants as a character. When being the prince of the Fire Nation again inevitably doesn't provide Zuko the unending happiness he thought it would, and when he discovers that he is the grandson of the previous Avatar Roku, he learns to value the approval of Iroh more than the approval of his father. And this shift in values explains his change of sides to working with Team Avatar. I think this consistency in his character is what prevents Zuko from frustrating the viewer, and allowing the viewer to understand why he is making such bad decisions makes it easier for them to sympathize with him. Anyway, all of that to say, man, I'm rambling a lot more than usual, aren't I? That Cass's character arc does not follow this rule at all. Cass is often shown to be the rational thinker of the group, compared to Rapunzel's naive optimism and Eugene's impulsive reactions. She does tend to lose her temper with others, but it's never without cause. And even so, she doesn't direct genuine anger towards Rapunzel since she values their relationship so much. Anytime she scolds her, it's out of a place of love and because she just wants her to be safe. While Cass and Rapunzel's relationship isn't without problems, these issues are very minor and easily solved in a single episode. Admittedly, the severity of Rapunzel and Cass's conflict gets heightened with their debate over whether they should listen 
listen to Adira, and with Cass's discovery of her past with Gothel. Still, something truly life-altering needs to happen to justify Cass completely betraying her strong relationship with Rapunzel and attempting to kill her friends as well as the entirety of Corona. Doing something like that is just too strongly opposed to her values and character traits. Again, Varian faced repeated rejections throughout his life, had his father die in a tragic way by his own mistake, and the only person that was left to support him, Rapunzel, had to turn her back on him. Along with that, Varian didn't have any particular attachment to the people around him, so it was easier to imagine him turning against them after being subjected to so much pain in such a short time. I'm not trying to imply that Cass's trauma is better or worse than Varian's, I just need there to be significant and consistent reasoning for the cast of season 3 to be so different from the cast of seasons 1 and 2. Right now, it's so paper thin that even if you could argue it justifies cast to act so out of character, it doesn't make for a very sympathetic or compelling antagonist anyway. That brings me to the next problem I had with the Moon Cass arc. The conflict between Rapunzel and Cass felt one-sided and repetitive. Every time they confront each other in season 3, they have the same argument about how Cass is angry at Rapunzel for taking Gothel from her, and Rapunzel explains that she obviously didn't choose to live with Gothel and was abused just like Cass. Watching this for an entire season feels exhausting because the morality of the situation is pretty clearly defined. Cass had a point about Rapunzel ignoring her feelings when they were just arguing over how they should go about their journey to the Dark Kingdom, but when Cass is trying to destroy Rapunzel and the entire Kingdom of Corona because of a situation that Rapunzel didn't have any say in, it's hard to find much moral complexity in the conflict. And despite this, Cass serves as the main antagonist for an entire season. With that, we have the third main problem of the arc the pacing. This one is pretty self-explanatory. We spent an entire season dragging out this conflict that isn't too compelling to begin with, and then we only get one episode to try and resolve everything. In the end, Cass just gets sent off in the woods to figure herself out, which is writer code for we don't know how to resolve our character arc. It feels like Cass and Rapunzel to an extent both get out of their conflict way too easily and just get to pick up where they left off with their lives. At its best, the Mooncast arc is okay, with some particularly good moments like the song Nothing Left to Lose, and at its worst, it's frustrating and tiresome to watch. So yeah, in order to save time, I didn't do my usual sugarcoating of my criticisms. I'm sorry if it came off a little harsher than usual, but let's move away from the destructive side of critique to look for a solution to all these problems. When you critique a work of art, you're supposed to do so with the artist's original intention in mind. So I did my best in my revision to follow the writer's original objective of telling telling a story where Cass feels neglected by those around her and struggles to find her own destiny. I think the most important accomplishment of this revision is that it needs to establish that Cass's commitment to Rapunzel consistently prevents her from achieving her goals, rather than Rapunzel accidentally getting in the way of small opportunities every now and then. Instead of having the vaguely defined goal of wanting to be respected by her peers as a royal soldier, maybe Cass could desire to be a military or political leader in Corona. I think being involved in politics could be an especially interesting direction for Cass's character to take. Cass could be more of a representative for the people of Corona. When the captain of the guard took her in as a child, she was looked down upon and abused by the classist members of the aristocracy. This causes her to desire a more free society where individuals can achieve social mobility and where the government better represents the people. These ideas could be weaved throughout season 1 and cause some ideological conflict between her and Rapunzel, who sympathizes with Cass's struggles but doesn't want to believe that her own family is the source of the problem. The events of season 1 could make Cass realize how incompetent King Frederick is, and how leaving the power to make decisions in the hands of a few royals is dangerous. There could even be a scene where Cass has to visit Varian in jail, maybe to interrogate him about the source of the automatons, and her perspective about the situation gets challenged as Varian shares his side of the story. She gets upset when Varian threatens more violence against Rapunzel, but can't help but feel conflicted about how King Frederick was willing to sacrifice old Corona to the destruction of the Black Rocks for his daughter's happiness. Just when Cass is finally ready to start taking action and rallying people to her cause, Rapunzel interrupts her by forcing her to help find the source of the Black Rocks. This would give Cass a more legitimate reason to resent being forced onto the expedition, since in the context of the original show, it's actually the opportunity to rise up the ranks she's been waiting for her whole life. Season 2 could carry on mostly as normal, and I think Adira could be used as an even more effective source of conflict between Rapunzel and Cass. This version of Adira would hold an undying allegiance to King Edmund, and maybe similarly to King Frederick, 
Isaac, she helped cover up the destructive influence the Moonstone was having in order to keep him in power. Cass could grow suspicious of Adira's unquestioning loyalty, while Rapunzel would remain naive and argue that Adira was just doing a good job as the King's Guard, only for it to be revealed during the Great Tree episode that Adira is willing to let Rapunzel die so that she can destroy the Moonstone and restore King Edmund to power. Rapunzel can still have her outburst with Cass, except it would be more framed around the idea that she isn't respecting Cass's ideas and holds an unjust amount of power over her. Waiting in the wings would also be taken from this angle, with Cass singing more about how she was forced to work for the monarchy from a young age and wishes she could have more opportunities to pursue her own path. After this, things can continue on as they did in the actual show, with some minor tweaks to better fit the new conflict. We make it to the house of yesterday's tomorrows, but I'd like to reveal Cass's backstory after Rapunzeltopia. I thought it was kind of unnecessary for the writers to try hiding the twists at this point, since it's pretty clear that Cass is going to betray the group in some way after the sudden rise in Cass's life sucks moments. <laughs> we would start the episode with Cass escaping from the room where she discovered her past and meeting with the rest of the group. As they're setting up camp, Rapunzel begins telling Cass about the events of Rapunzeltopia, causing Cass to think to herself about what she saw while in the house of yesterday's tomorrows. We get a flashback to Cass entering the room, but this time, Xanteri approaches her in a friendlier way painting herself as a wise figure that is here to help her. My version of Cass's backstory is somewhat different. Gothel was actually a member of the aristocracy in Corona as the wife of a lord, but she lost it all when she became entangled in an affair with another man and ended up getting pregnant with Cass. Following medieval gender rules, Gothel took all of the blame for the situation and was cut off from high society. Gothel resented Cass for the rest of her life, blaming her for being forced to live as a poor commoner. Like in the actual episode, we see that Gothel manipulates Cass into thinking she she's supposed to live as her servant. As a child, Gothel never fully explained the situation to Cass, and she was too young to understand the complexities of it either way. Watching the situation back now, Cass realizes how the upper classes were corrupted by their excessive privilege and treated the people beneath them carelessly, as Gothel had an affair with no regard for her husband, was then kicked out by a society that cared more about preserving the image of the man than her, and then abused her own child because she wasn't royalty. To only make things worse, Gothel then abandons Cass to Cass capture Rapunzel out of an attempt to reclaim her lost glory by making herself young and beautiful again. The truth about her childhood crushes Cass, chaining her sadness over her trauma to rage. Xanteri exploits this frustration, convincing Cass that she needs to destroy the monarchy and liberate the common people. Cass begins to give in to Xanteri's philosophy of violent action, but she draws the line at hurting Rapunzel, holding fast to the hope that her friend will support her and still has good inside of her. Xanteri concedes, knowing that Cass will just reject her if she pushes any further. She she simply leaves her with the warning that Rapunzel would disappoint her, and change will never come unless she takes action. We cut back to the present, where Rapunzel and Cass are discussing their experiences in the house of yesterday's tomorrows. Rapunzel begins to complain about how difficult it is to be a leader, and how she wishes she could switch places with Cass, as she believes being a royal guard is much easier. This confirms Cass's worries that Xanteri was right, and she determines that threatening Rapunzel with violence is the only way to make her listen. When Rapunzel asks Cass what she saw in her room, Room, Cass hides the truth, brushing it off as just a strange nightmare that didn't make much sense. The episode then ends with the sequence of Eugene discovering that Cass will betray their group, and then we get to the two-part special, Destinies Collide. The events leading up to Cass's betrayal would play out similarly. I know I criticized the handling of Rapunzel's character in my original video, as I argued that Rapunzel was being way too ignorant of Cass's feelings throughout their whole conflict. Some commenters made the point that Rapunzel, while empathetic of the feelings of others, can also be naive and unable to navigate conflict in relationships, and I ended up agreeing with this point. So I don't think Rapunzel failing to suspect that Cass will betray her is egregious enough to be cut from this revision. Still, there would be some adjustments to this when it comes to Adira and Edmund's involvement, since I changed the story of the Dark Kingdom slightly. In this version, Edmund wouldn't try to stop the group from arriving, and he wouldn't be Eugene's father. This is probably the most significant change I've made in this revision, and some of you might not be too happy about it. Personally, besides the song Everything I Ever thought I knew, I didn't find Eugene's storyline with Edmund to be all that interesting, and it just kind of felt like weird fanfiction that didn't fit well with his childhood as an on-the-run thief. It's not a huge loss if we cut Edmund being Eugene's father in my eyes, 
and in some ways I think it makes the story better. In my revision, Edmund would have spent his years living in the ruins of the Dark Kingdom, having nowhere left to go as he desperately tries to destroy the Moonstone and restore his kingdom to its former glory. He would welcome Rapunzel's group in with open arms and grant them safe passage into the Moonstone's chamber, after Adira helped them navigate all the obstacles on the way. There would be a sinister feeling to his friendly facade though, and it would become apparent to the audience that he's willing to sacrifice Rapunzel's life in order to destroy the Moonstone. Just before before Rapunzel can grab it, Cass would swoop in with her dramatic betrayal and take the Moonstone for herself, gaining its power in the process. The whole group is horrified at this, but Adira and Edmund are the first ones to attack. As Cass fights them off, shooting black rocks all over the place, she inadvertently causes a pile of rubble to collapse on top of them, trapping them in the depths of the Dark Kingdom forever. It would serve as a symbolic end to how they become consumed by their desire to restore their influence, as well as a representation of the end of Rapunzel and Cass's relationship as the commanding monarch and the loyal soldier. Rapunzel would plead with Cass to not go down this path, but Cass would regretfully insist that this is the only way for her to enact any real change in the world. The episode would go on as normal, with Rapunzel returning to Corona and helping Varian defeat the Separatists of Poria. Most of the other episodes of season 3 would stay the same, but with slight alterations to match the new canon. The most significant change would be Xanteria's relationship with Cass. Instead of manipulating Cass to solely hate Rapunzel, Xanteria would present herself as a hero of the people who just wants to prevent Corona's power from being concentrated in the hands of a few monarchs. She would represent Cass's desire for a more free society, and instead motivate her to use violence against Corona in order to pressure the ruling class into submission. But like in the original show, Xanteria really only cares about getting the Sunstone and Moonstone so that she can hold complete control over the world, and is manipulating Cass's dreams of a better world to achieve this. Cass's attacks on Corona would be more frequent during the beginning of Season 3, and she would continue threatening violence until Rapunzel met with her and talked about reforming Corona's government. King Frederick would refuse to confront the situation and simply shield his people from the attacks as best he could, and Rapunzel would begin to question whether it's worth hearing Cass out or not. Cass would confront the group head-on during the special episode, Episode, Cassandra's Revenge. Things would play out similarly, with Xanteri having convinced her that she needs to get the Graftic Scroll to give them the power they need for completing their mission. The dialogue itself between Cass and Rapunzel would be adjusted to reflect their new conflict, as Cass remarks how the ruling class is finally taking her seriously now that she's able to fight back, while Rapunzel tries to convince her that they can find a better way to solve the problem. Cass would also be less aggressive directly towards Rapunzel in my version, and would try to avoid conflict with her since she still cares for her deep down. Either way, Cass Cass succeeds in kidnapping Varian and taking him to her palace, they sing nothing left to lose because there's no way we're cutting that masterpiece, and Rapunzel and Cass fight it out, except this time, their conflict causes Xanteri to be restored to her full power, and she obtains the Moonstone and Sunstone. Cass and Rapunzel aren't knocked off the tower and instead are there to witness this transformation. With the revelation that the enchanted girl was actually Xanteri, Cass realizes that she was being manipulated this whole time to knock the monarchs out of power so that Xanteri could just take their place completely going against her supposed ideals. Cass tries to stop Santeri, but she quickly overpowers her and forces the whole group to escape. Basically, the entire course of Season 3 would change from this point on, but I think it's for the better. As I said in my original video, the conflict between Rapunzel and Cass felt incredibly dragged out by the end of the season. Additionally, I like this change because it gives Cass and Rapunzel more time to heal their relationship. After escaping the palace, Rapunzel and Cass exchange a tearful set of apologies. Cass asks Rapunzel to forgive her for being so blinded by her rage that she helped bring back a power-hungry warlock, while Rapunzel asks Cass to forgive her for all the times she shoved her aside and treated her as lesser than her. The two make up, but Cass promises that she'll fix her mistakes and stop Xanteri, and that's just what the group spends the rest of the season doing. While Xanteri uses her immense power to take over Corona, Rapunzel and the others do their best to keep the people safe while trying to find a way to take Corona back. This would give Cass time to redeem herself and join back into the group, while Rapunzel reconsiders her values and responsibilities as a princess. After a few episodes, we then get to the finale, where Rapunzel and Cass work together to defeat Xanteri as they did in the original and finally reconcile. My revision would have a much different aftermath of the battle though. Rapunzel would hold a meeting of all of the people of Corona, where they would work together to form a new government that includes more checks and balances and better represents the people. Look, I know it sounds like I'm just doing the American Revolution, but the execution wouldn't be this on the nose. The show would end with Rapunzel leaving her mark as an exceptional princess, and Cassandra would finally achieve her goal of creating a more equal society. 
But you know, this is all just hypothetical. It's just some stupid fanfiction I wrote, but do you like it? This is the first time I've ever done a big revision to a show like this, and it was actually a pretty fun writing exercise. I think this version of Cass is more sympathetic and almost one of those antagonists that was actually right. After all, King Frederick is shown to be a very careless leader, and the people of Corona have to experience some kind of world-ending disaster every other week under his reign. It'd be interesting to have Cass criticize him and insert some moral complexity into the show. Also, because she's fighting against a large entity like the government, it warrants a bigger reaction from Cass, rather than her making everyone suffer because of her anger at one person. Speaking of moral complexity, I think this message is more impactful and thought-provoking than Tangled the series' general message of forgiveness. It makes the whole show feel more cohesive and explores how power structures affect a variety of characters, from Rapunzel to Varian to Cass. Still, there are some rough edges to this revision. It kind of turns Rapunzel into an out-of-touch aristocrat by keeping her arrogant to Cass's ideals, and some people might not like that direction for her character compared to how kind and down-to-earth she was in the movie. At the same time, I would argue that Rapunzel is so naive to how the world works that if someone told her to respect the king and queen because they're the good guys, she would do so without much thought. Some of the changes with the Dark Kingdom and Xanteri are also a bit world-breaking, and the rules of magic in the show's world would have to be rewritten to better fit this. In my opinion, these are minor flaws in comparison to the service my rewrite does to Cass. Her values are more consistent, her goal is clearer and more sympathetic, and she gets enough time to redeem herself through significant actions instead of just one apology. Writing this script made me remember how hard being creative is. Maybe this is why I often avoid creating large-scale stories with huge, overarching plotlines and just stick to writing fun characters. And fittingly, I'm most happy with how the characters and themes turned out in this rewrite. Still, there are a lot of other cool reimaginings out there concerning Tangled the series, with the Eugene Moonstone AU being the most popular from my experience. So feel free to let me know what you think of my revision in the comments. Thank you for watching this very long video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!